past the mills, past the stacks. On a gathering storm comes a tall, handsome man in a dusty black coat with a red right hand. Hello again, lovely listeners, to another edition of Tales for Wales, the pod that never fails to enthrall, entertain, and inform. I'm Jack, and as always, I'm joined by my my buddy, my my friend, my confidant, Franco. Yeah. And today we're going to be talking about uh, a lesser-known boy of Welsh descent, Owain Llawgoch. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry. What now? I was just jumping in because you always sound like a late night radio DJ. You always sound like you're hiding from your girlfriend doing this. It's, it's like the you... only way I can uh, I, I can sort of keep a stream of consciousness going because uh, I don't I hate doing the um, uh, like winging it. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to really write these things down beforehand. You, you Sometimes like it turns out okay if I'm if I've had a couple of beers, but yeah, you just sound like you're doing hush tones, like you're a uh, uh, um, on. <laughs> Sounds like I'm too close to the mic. Yeah. Hello, guys and <laughs> girls. We're going to. <laughs> it's horrible. It sounds like you're breathing down my neck. <laughs> oh, the beautiful sound. Oh, don't we love it? How far are you Been into your of, I'm, gonna, I'm just. I've just finished. Actually, I'm going to crack mine. Hang on. Let me. Let me. Retort. Two seconds. Oh, it was a wet one. Oh. Oh, she sounded juicy. <laughs> she sounded <laughs> thirsty. Uh, yeah, so I interrupted you then. Um, we're That's doing a wine Llawgoch, um, which I'm sure you'll explain why and some other bits later on. But before we get, we get into the meat and potatoes, um, what the bloody hell have you been up to, mate? Not too much, mate. I, not much since uh, I saw you Sunday. Uh, but um, uh, I suppose I can go into... Uh, I, I, got a bit pissed, quite a bit pissed, uh, with my brother on Saturday, before you came over. You might have um, noticed... So I came over on Sunday, of, didn't I? Uh, yeah, you came over on Sunday. You might have noticed a waft of rum in the air. It wasn't just my house, it was me. It was oh, my yeah. glands fucking sweating out. But yeah, I got pretty pissed there, and um, I don't think I, I, I... I'm trying to remember if I've mentioned this on the pod before, but I know you know this, but when me and my brother get together, we get Suitably pissed, and then we when we move on to the spirits and stuff, we always put the Braveheart soundtrack on. <laughs> so romantic. I just don't know it's why a, either. I it's think a it banger happened, of a it happened, soundtrack. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic. James Horner, my boy, yeah. R.I.P. But dead? um Yeah, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure he is. Oh well, pull one out to a, to a real one. <laughs> yeah, pull pour it out for our homie. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I don't know why uh, we put it on. It happened like one time, and we were like, "Oh, this is a class soundtrack, isn't it?" And then just it's it's become like routine now. And then we end up every time they go put it on shuffle, we try and guess what track goes to which part of the movie. Sad little lives you lead. What's, oh, sad or class? And class. you're just jelly, mate. You're just absolutely jelly. Yeah. Also, because me and you would be like, uh, that's a scene with the, um, uh, oh, that's a scene oh, where oh. the, the meat of the clans. Uh, uh, actually, in this scene, he's running with his claymore, but uh, in the next scene, he's running with an axe, and then the next scene, he's back to his claymore. Figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> if you actually go back to the th- to the 14th century, they actually wouldn't have like dresses yeah. like that. Dressed that still wouldn't be around at that time, actually. And actually, Malcolm was actually a good guy. Um, I, I <laughs> had so many bloopers on that film; it's fucking ridiculous. I, think I it's hate that because I, I don't want because to me it's a perfect movie. Oh, so I'm like, I, I, I really think it's when there. they point these things out, I'm like, oh fuck off! You know, yeah. any other film, by all means, do it, but not, not to my my perfect baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of um, that video of his when he's hammered. Reminds me of him. Um, do you remember seeing that one of um, oh, what's his fucking name? Um, Night Rider. Um, oh fucking hell! It's Hasselhoff, David Hasselhoff. Oh, yeah. And he's like and his daughter, like as a wake up call to him, filmed him when he was pissed, and he's like topless, <laughs> and he's like trying to eat this burger, and it's like the the patty in the burger is like slipping out. <laughs> And it just like goes on the floor, and he's like, "It's it's such a bleak fucking video." And the daughter's like, "Dad, I had to do this for you, Dad." Oh, <laughs> no. it's, it's, Cut it's to our partners doing that for us. 
Yeah. Although yeah, it's all right. It's worked podcast. out for him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's worked out for him. He's working for farm foods now or something, isn't he? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah and he's moved to Swansea. So, exactly. <laughs> so he's, he's on top there, now. Yeah. I remember I heard a story that he, because he's like, I think his wife is from somewhere in Swansea and they all live in like, just like everyone else does, you know, we all live in terrace houses. Um, mm. She's been saying to him like, oh, my house isn't anywhere th- anything like your house in Hollywood. You know, it's really small. Like, prepare yourself for realizing that our house mm. isn't going to be as big as your house is. In and he's like, oh, okay, yeah, okay. I do you know? I don't care about any of that anyway. But yeah, sure, I'll prep, prep myself. Um, and <laughs> when he went there, he visited the street. And he's like, why are you on about this house is massive? And he thought the entire street was <laughs> her house. <laughs> what an idiot to think every the house is so big Man, you got a door how disassociated street. could you yeah, be <laughs> this entire street oh my god yeah. so I, I love that you've painted every section a different colour as well <laughs> yeah, yeah. you have a lot of entrances you stupid fuck. Yeah. what's with all the doors <laughs> I think he is a yeah he's, he's given up the booze isn't he another quitter I think uh, yeah I think he had to after his uh Sneak burger. the door out with him like that. <laughs> Look, who hasn't fucking dropped a burger? All right. Yeah. It's just a crime to drop a burger on a Friday night. <laughs> Dad, it's yeah. Sunday morning. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Baywatch. I do what I like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, well. This has been a ramshackle start. Um, I mean, to be fair, they always are. We picked it back it? up talking about. Uh, uh, <laughs> Hasselhoff's alcoholism, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> cheery subject. Yeah, um, we, we're doing this on a Tuesday, which I always think has a certain a different vibe to on a Thursday. It's a, well, it's more sober to begin with. It's yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's we've t- discussed this many a time before, but Thursday is like the the great day of renewal, yeah, isn't it? You know, we're always buzzing on a Thursday, yeah. and, and then I Tuesday am... we're barely fucking recovered. <laughs> You're fucking hating life, d- detesting yeah. the world. Um, uh, but uh, it is Bank Holiday weekend coming up, so this Thursday is the holy grail of Thursdays. Oh, it's a big, big Thursday, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but we can't. We're too busy to to to, to pod it. So you've got us Such on a Tuesday. Big bloody cranky, social lives, yeah. Yeah, we, we mentioned <laughs> anti-Semites and alcohol. Well, I'm I'm visiting my um my mum on Thursday oh, night. So, although I could potentially do a pod from there, you don't want me on here with, if I'm in St. Athens, I'll be in such a fucking ghastly mood <laughs> back in my home village I think I that's exactly there. when we want you on the pod oh Jesus yeah <laughs> I do have a couple of hours actually mother. before before my mum gets home I probably could squeeze one in but oh, yeah. I don't know I don't know if that's if that's what the people want is it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well that's the thing we've got to record these pretty quickly because we they, come out every week we used to have like a bankroll and now we're always scrabbling oh, around God. trying to get everything done in time we did we squandered our time so much didn't we because we, yeah, we had, we had such a backlog we were like look we got months of backlog and we're fine and we just thought there's no rush and now we're like shit <laughs> we're so behind every week um i went to go get a key cut and um when i was in there the dude was so weird like i i, I opened like the door it was like a, you know key cuts outside like supermarkets they're in like a little shed and they oh, like timpsons or whatever it's yeah. a timpsons they also do shoes and keys and like it's like pick a lane guys it's such a bizarre thing what can you do on it's just like what's, what's all the old time shit that we can do in one <laughs> little tiny building i can do sand dials and sand dials and i can do fucking <laughs> yeah. egg timers i can buff your shoes sir i can fucking, yeah. <laughs> Does your carriage I'm need rebuffing? Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, he, he when, I, when I went in there, um, he sneezed. So I was like, "Oh, uh, bless you." I said, oh, "Oh, something like that." Or he, I think maybe he coughed or sneezed, and I kind of went, "Oh, bless you, I'll be okay." And he went, um, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." I had to take yesterday off though. I had the shits all day yesterday. And I was like, oh, Christ. Oh, Jesus. And, and he went, um, I'm feeling a bit better now, but uh, most of this morning, I kept coming to go back to the toilet, back and forth, back and forth. It was the shits it was. Like, yeah, you said it once, mate. And we're in a Jeez, fucking... Stop saying the shits. Is like, not that a disgusting <laughs> yeah. word, man? I fucking hate that. I know, yeah. And, um, <laughs> it, he's in a really in, like, a confined space. I was like, I was ready to come like for like a weekend. I think, yeah, yeah, he's come to see you. And I just thought, oh, I don't want to fucking be in this grubby room and get fucking oh. gastro bugged up by this guy. So when he said that, I stood so close to the door, and then um, I said, oh, can you cut this key for me? He went, yeah, sure. And I went to take it off the um, the chain, the, the my key ring, and he touched my hand, and I was like, oh, oh no, shit, hands. No. It was just... I was going to say, in those tiny little buildings, little shacks are in as well, they're probably like... <laughs> 
touch your noses anyway, aren't you? Yeah. It's like, oh, the shits I did, mate. <laughs> what the oh, fucking God. shits, yeah. right, yeah. And you know what, I, I said, had... Bl- to... Bless you isn't a fucking social cue to, like, tell me, a, <laughs> tell you about what's going on. I think he thought I was a vicar, and he was like, oh, right, I'm being blessed. <laughs> <laughs> did you call him son or something? <laughs> bless you, me, son. son. What ails you? <laughs> oh, I've got fucking shits, mate. Fucking coming out of that rusty tap water. I was like, oh, Christ. You can talk to me, young lad. <laughs> <laughs> but he wouldn't, like, he went, and I didn't say, I went, oh, right. And he went, oh, yeah, so, no, I think he was, he had the shits the day before, the, the day before I saw him, so it was like two days ago. He went, and yesterday then, I was a bit ruffled, I couldn't keep anything down. Feeling a bit better today, been back and forth a few times, but a bit better. I went, oh, yeah, oh, it's awful. Went, yeah, and I'm, I'm off to a car show tomorrow. I was like, oh, that makes sense. Anyone who's obsessed with cars will also tell you that they've just had the shits for two days. And then he went say, just write a diary, mate, and I'll fucking come by and pick it up another time. <laughs> and I can catch and up. I'll hand it over to the, the fucking social police for, for breaking convention and telling me things they must Yeah, for breaking the fucking social law. <laughs> and I think, I'd, and also, I said, well, I, I did say bless you, and that's such a weird thing to say to someone nowadays, especially because I'm like vehemently non religious. But I'm just going, oh, bless you, God bless you. Yeah, just the devil <laughs> escaping your lungs. <laughs> You must keep the pox away from me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that's not a normal social interaction. It's, but you know what? If The fact that you said it was in Timpsons, do you remember when it kind of makes sense? Yeah, definitely. Like, that's the kind yeah. of people I kind of assume are working there. No offence if any of our listeners work no, in Timpsons, no, but like... But... Just you prove me wrong, you know. <laughs> yeah, prove us wrong. <laughs> the beast of proof is upon yourself. <laughs> yeah. That's how right. a claim is made, isn't it? We've said it. <laughs> Proof yeah. is wrong if you don't think it's right. Yeah, that's what all law is now. <laughs> <laughs> the burden of proof is actually on the on those who've been accused. So on the accused. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guilty uh, as soon as I fucking say. <laughs> guilty as Timpson. <laughs> Do you want to? Um, I'm a bit delirious today. I had over the last two nights. I've had fucking abysmal sleep, and I think it's. It, I think because I have such a heavy weekends. And then mm. reality hits, and you just fucking awful night's sleep. Then cause you, it's kind of not real sleep as well, is it? No, it's yeah. swatted. It's like it's yeah. such like it doesn't do what it's meant to do. It doesn't rest you. I went out with a football team on Friday, and I didn't go to bed till like half six, and I and <sighs> in the morning, effort. and then like went went woke up at like ten or eleven or whatever. So it just ruins me. Yeah, um, I'm I'm a constant victim of the fact that like I was up till about the same time actually, like six, with my brother on Saturday. And I knew, like, when I was looking at the clock, strike four, for example, I was like, you should just go to bed now. You're going to feel awful tomorrow and the day after and probably the day after that. But at the time, I'm, like, hopped full of rum. And it's just like, yeah, why not? Just fucking, just stay up. Why not? And also, what are you going to be? Like, who cares if you hung up on the company dime unless you're my boss listening, then I'm really sorry. But <laughs> And I've never done it. And I've never done it. And I, and I won't be this tomorrow. And I promise you I'll be fine tomorrow morning. Yeah, I promise I'll be productive, I swear. <laughs> All right, should we get going with this week's episode? Because it's a really yeah, good Yeah, go on then. Yeah, this is... um. What I like about this one is it's... Uh, it's the exact sort of thing that we wanted to talk, the type of thing we wanted to talk about when we came up with the idea for the podcast, wasn't it? It's sort of like lesser known Definitely. Welsh history, the sort of shit you never get taught, which is why I quite like this one. So, yes, for those who didn't hear before or missed it before, maybe, uh, we're talking about a guy called Owen Llawgoch today. So, Owen Llawgoch, real name Owen Ap Thomas, was a descendant of Llewellyn Ap Yorweth, also known as Llewellyn the Great we've mentioned on this pod a couple of times. Uh, he was king of Gwynedd and eventually the Prince of Wales in the early 13th century. Owain Llawgoch was also a great nephew to Llewellyn Ab Griffith, a.k.a. Llewellyn the Last, or Llewellyn Llewellyn, who gets a lot of talk on this pod. And he was Prince of Wales until his death in 1282. And I think we covered that in the Battle of Orrowin Bridge, was it? Uh, yeah, that's the one. So to give you a bit of background, um, just on sort of uh, Owen's history, uh, Owen Llawgoch's grandfather, Rodri, was the brother of Llewellyn Llewellyn, Llewellyn the last. Um, but unlike his brother, Llewellyn, who's considered, in on this podcast, certainly a right gem of a lad in terms of Welsh history, Rodri was pretty content to live out his days as a lord in England in a place called Tatsfield. So after the Welsh Rebellion ended in 1283... 
not long after Llewellyn the Last, Llewellyn and Llewellyn's uh, death, Wales was brought into English rule, and although Rodri and his son Thomas were heirs to the Kingdom of Gwynedd, they, ha- they were happy enough to just sit back uh, on one of the many plots of land around Surrey, Cheshire, Gloucestershire, and just leave Wales to the oppression of the English, basically. But a spark of patriotism would eventually find its way back into the family through Rodri's grandson, Thomas's son, Owain. So just to surmise that, because I know I've said a lot of a lot of names and a lot of relations there, Rodri is uh, Llewellyn and Llewellyn's brother, Thomas was Rodri's son, and Owain Llaugor is Thomas's son. So Owain's full name son. is Owain Ap Thomas Ap Rodri, which means yeah, Owain, it's... son of Thomas, son of Rodri, which is there. That's catch. right, yeah. Exactly. Very Have more names, mate. <laughs> and um, So, despite being uh, an heir to a hefty amount of land in England, uh, Owain joined up with the French military under Philip IV of France and spent a lot of his life in Europe. He would inherit his father's property when his dad Thomas died in 1363. Uh, but he wouldn't hold his land for long because during the Hundred Years' War, Owain sided with the French, which meant his lands in England and any sort of remaining claim to the land in Wales uh, was confiscated by the English crown. That's I, I, I'm assuming that was just kind of like a punishment for anyone who didn't side yeah. with, with England if you, were, if you had lands in England. So yeah. The guy, the guy he had inherited these things from his, his dad and then qu- very quickly got them um, confiscated by the English crown. So being without land or title in his home nation, uh, Owain remained in service of the French as a free company. He went by the name uh, Yvon de Gaulle. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, which, Yvon de Gaulle. Yvon de Gaulle. Fuck you, you fucking worst <laughs> bastard. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's basically it. Quote. How you say, uh, Van de Gaal? Um, <laughs> How you say, uh, fuck you, bitch? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to say, Very free good. company, free company. That means like a band of mercenaries, isn't it? Yeah, you're basically yeah. yeah sort Think of hire, the expendables one to three. That is exactly what it was like. Think of <laughs> yeah. Owain as like the the sliced alone, if you will, uh, <laughs> of of fourteenth century France. <laughs> and um, so yeah, uh, Van de Gaal uh, was very uninventively just uh, French for Owen of Wales. Yeah. So Glad. yeah, no, not it's not the best nickname, but you know, there you go. So this free company uh, actually consisted mainly of other Welshmen who had fought alongside Owain for many years in France. His second in command was a guy called Yéan Wynn, known, this is a better nickname now, known to the French as Le Pursuivant d'Amour. I don't know, again, if I've brutalised that pronunciation. The Pursuer of Love. Oh! Ooh la la! la la. la. And um, I'm assuming he was just a shagger, because I was looking at why he was called that, and I couldn't really find much on it, so I'm just going to (laughs) assume... He, he was, was how the French say le sex pest. <laughs> yeah, le pervert. <laughs> le pervert. <laughs> so yeah, that was a uh, he was the second command or Yean Win. So Yean's ancestor actually happened to be a lord of Gwynedd as well, named Ed Neved Vachan. And he served Owen's ancestor, Llewellyn the Great, four generations prior. So uh just I thought that was a nice little tip yes, of information. Yes, right? A nice definitely. example of history kind of echoing yeah. itself, if you want. Um, but Yean's father, he was still a pretty big-time lord back in North Wales at the time, uh, and he helped Owen's company financially. So Owen and his men fought in a load of battles for the French, uh, where Owen gained the nickname Llaugor, or Red Hand, in English, and this was a nod to how much uh, of the enemy's blood he spilled, supposedly. He so he was quite, quite a... He was a fucking nutcase with a sword, yeah. With all this skill and experience that Owain and his men had gathered over the years, plus the financial backing of Yean's father, they soon started to get a reputation for themselves in France and even managed to impress Charles V, who'd recently been made king uh, in 1364. So the blood of many a patriotic prince would make itself known again through Owain in 1372, when Owain announced his intention to claim the throne of Wales. He was backed financially by Charles V and Owen set off from uh, and again I'm going to butcher this pronunciation Harflier yeah 
uh, Flea, half Flea, whatever, uh, and attack the island of Guernsey. The invasion, though, would be very short-lived because King Charles ordered well, him well, and his company... <clears throat> oh, go on. I, I think... <clears throat> um, it, it was it given something. I did read it was like the equivalent of today's money of like two hundred and forty million pounds worth to go and draw up an army to invade Wales and then from Wales go to England. But first, the um, the weather turned, so the first place they could find that was close to the English king was Guernsey. So they were meant to be heading to yeah. Wales. The weather turned bad, and they went, "Oh fuck it, we'll just go fuck up Guernsey." <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a, it's one of those like you can tell that. For well, from what I've read, anyway, that, that Charles V, he, although I'm sure he was uh, fond of Owain and his shagger of a second in command, <laughs> but it would have absolutely disrupted Benefit, the English yeah, on their definitely. own sort of turf, wouldn't it? Having yeah. him sort of causing chaos there, so it made sense for him to sort of invest in him a little bit. Um, but yeah, uh, as you mentioned, the weather sort of turns a bit sour. He ended up landing in Goons. He thought, well, fuck this place up for a bit. But he was ordered back by uh, King Charles. Uh, to France uh, to support the ongoing war against the English. There was, was like lots of kickoffs because um, yeah. he was fighting all over, wasn't he? He was in like Normandy. Uh, he was fighting in Belgium. He was fighting like yeah. The... I go through a couple of them later. Like he I basically see. was just an immensely well travelled warrior. Like he yeah. fought all over Europe basically. But um, yes, he was called back to to France because of the escalating war. And Owen, his men's success in battle continued in France. He uh, defeating the English and a Gascon force. At uh, Sub- Subi? Subai? Subi? I- I- I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Stop worrying about the pronunciation. We're not French. Yeah, it doesn't matter. French, it's it's a bloody French. Way. Um, so, yeah, he defeated an English and Gascon force there later that year, and he captured two very high ranking lords as well, which is great for the, the French. Um, oh, and he planned another invasion of Wales in 1373, but this, th- this time the campaign was abandoned before it even began as more and more conflicts presented themselves in in the French English war. Uh, so he was he went sort of all over. He fought twice more in France uh, and his mercenary services were then called upon to conquer land in Austria for a French lord uh, called Engerand de Cousy. Even though uh, Owen and his boys were getting the big W again and again all over Europe, they would end up suffering their first well-known defeat at least in Bern in Switzerland where they were contracted to fight in uh, something called the Googler War. Absolute <laughs> boar Googlers. Um, <laughs> I, t- I looked a little bit into it because I was saying, why are you calling it the Googler War? Like, what a stupid <laughs> name. And uh, apparently it was a bunch of French and English mercenaries that invaded yeah. a bit of Switzerland. Uh, I didn't look too much into it. I have no idea what side Owain and his boys were on on that one. I couldn't be bo- asked to like look into that, so, <laughs> you know, fucking shoot me. But... Um, Anyway, he had, a, he had a bit of a loss there, anyway, for the first one in a long time. So after all these battles in 1377, there were then reports floating about that Owen was planning yet another attempt to claim the throne of Wales. So Owen's reputation as a skilled warrior and effective leader was much more widely spread now after fighting across several European countries, and the English ruler, rulers became very nervous. To avoid allowing a seasoned warrior like Owain to reclaim Wales and potentially inspire another rebellion, the English government under Edward III uh, sent an assassin, uh, a Scotsman called John Lamb, to travel to Europe and kill Owain. So Lamb was uh, a bit of a nasty boy, actually, a bit of a conniving little snake, because not only did he um, sat on his mission to kill Owain, but he also took the time to like befriend him as well and get really chummy with him, to the point that he was appointed uh, as his chamberlain, which I had to look this up. This is basically someone who like keeps your house in order. An ideal role for an assassin, you might say. Plenty of opportunity there. And that's exactly what it was. So, so then in July 1378, John Lamb stabbed Owain Tlaugoch to death something that was described uh, as a sad end to a flamboyant career, which I thought was a very unusual way of <laughs> describing, like, uh, you know, slitting throats, cashing checks and breaking necks all over Europe as flamboyant. It makes it sound like he's like yeah. a dancer, like an exotic dancer of some kind. I read as well that, uh, so it's Edward III, who was the, the king who sent him over to, to, to old John Lamy to go kill him. 
Um, he was the mm-hmm. grandson of old Edward Longshanks. And uh, he was so worried about him galvanising the Welsh because he had loads of strong support from North Wales. Um, he went against the chival- chivalric code which dominated the medieval warfare at the time. Um, and it was one of the first times he, he, they'd opted for a sly move of assassination. And it was a re- mm. it, that kind of showed how how worried he was about um, Owen. He was saying things like this because Edward knew how much of a pain his great grandfather, you know, his uncle had been. Um, mm. He didn't want to take the risk anymore, and he went, yeah, you know that, that whole thing of chivalry and being kind of like uh, honourable, yeah, sort of fighting like yeah, yeah gentlemen and or, you know lords and uh, well, sirs and whatnot, isn't it? Edward III had just gone through a period where his dad was a rubbish king, and there was loads of infighting and rebellions, and it were not, it was a, it was a really bad reign. Um, Edward put a quash to all of that, and he had like a really long time. He was like in, he was king for like fifty years. Um, oh yeah, and I've just found the note I made earlier that according to the official letters at the time, um, the English paid the assassin twenty pounds to murder Owain, and in context, uh, the pay for an archer during that period was four pence a day. So John, he mm. made quite a big old, big old. Uh, yeah, ward. I he um, escaped. And I lived. saw that as well. Yeah, he escaped and lived in England to a very old age, apparently. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I found that as well. The receipt. It, um, uh, twenty quid, like you said, but I work. I try. I worked out how much twenty quid would be now oh, to yeah. try and sort of gauge how much that would be, and it works out to about nineteen and a half grand in today's money, which <laughs> that makes it sound slightly better because you think killing a man for twenty quid but sounds a bit fucking much is, brutal. Four pence compared to twenty pounds seems a big jump. Oh yeah, big? like I, I imagine that was a fair whack. And, you know, like I said, 19 and a half grand. I, I mean, I don't know what the going rate for a fucking assassination is today. How do you figure but, that out? No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, you can, mate, if you, uh, you can just type in inflation calculator. I have no idea how accurate that is. But, uh, yeah, you can go back as far as, uh, when was this, 1378. Yeah, 20 quid back then is about 19 and a half grand and a couple of odd quid on top uh, <laughs> these days. That sounds well, more like what I'd expect an assassination to cost. I don't know. I thought they'd be cost, like hundred grand or. But I don't. I mean, I don't know. Why, you know, how how much is the cost of a life? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dare we debate it? Mm-hmm. Where was it? Yeah. All right. Well, well, well. you think for someone as high profile as as Owen Cloud Gork that you would you know it would be more than that? I think. But yeah. pff, I don't know. Well, he seemed to have, yeah he escaped, but apparently it was a really they, they, it was talked about in history and in the the. It, at the time, loads at the fact that they'd hired an assassin, which was really unchivalry. Very unchivalry sly, to yeah. do. Couldn't yeah. face him on the open field, so decided to pay fucking dirty bucks. You know, on him. the French um, erected a monument to him in 2003, um, and the majority of the funds were donated by the French government. It's a place called Mortag- Mortagne, or Mont. Oh, yeah. Yeah, somewhere in France. <laughs> they, uh, they, yeah, they, they built a statue to Owen. Uh, so like he, cool. he's, he, uh, yeah, he's like a. It's mad that we don't have a statue for him, but the French do. Yeah, well, he um, you know, he did, he was su- uh, successful in a lot of French battles, especially during the Hundred Year War, like, as I said earlier. So, he's, I mean, he probably did more for France than he did for Wales. That, like, that's the other thing I was gonna say. Uh, he's slightly held as a symbol of Mar Dalagon. Which is like in Welsh mythology, it's like the prophet who will come free the Welsh from the tyrannous Anglo-Saxon oppressors. Mm. Um, but most of his life, he'd lived in France, and he only really came back. <laughs> he only got kicked off a sink when his inheritance wasn't getting paid. So it does yeah. feel a bit like how how much did he really care? But it's, it's romantic to think of this uh, this this foreign print this, yeah. this prince of foreign land um, coming back. Certainly, something that I I didn't know about until uh, I think it was my yeah it was my. F- father-in-law basically he told me about he was reading a book about um uh Llewellyn and it touched on this Slough Gorch thing and just gave like you know a couple of paragraphs about him and he asked me about it and I'd never heard of it so I thought let's have a look and then there was quite a lot of info on him actually mm-hmm. but he was yeah he was buried ne- uh, in uh, near Cognac um and with his death that meant the senior line of house uh Aberfro, uh the lords of Gwynedd came to an end so the title of Prince of Wales would eventually fall to a son of De Haybarth and Powys in the year 1400. A lovely young, young chap you might know the name of. Oh, England, Ooh, sizzle, sizzle reel. <laughs> uh, um, and yeah, so that was it. That's uh, so in Cloud so life is the, a kind of mystery. That's the real life. But I'm going to yeah. pick up from the myth and the legend aspect. Because we are a land of myth and legend. And uh, 
there's a lot of myth and legend surrounding this lad. So I rounded up um, the best three, and well, <laughs> I'm not sure for the best. But I rounded up three, which I thought were, were fun to talk about. Um, well, I saw some bits pop up um, when I was looking, uh, you know, about the myth section and the legends, and I thought, you know what, I'm not going to read it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be wowed by Franco yeah. in, in real time. So um, the first one is called the Sleeping Warrior, and it's a a bloke. They don't. I didn't find out who he was. I did try to, but I couldn't find anything about him. But some bloke called. David uh, Meirig of Betis Bled- Bledris, Bledrus, Betos Bledrus, was helping drive cattle from Cardiganshire to London. And on the way, he cut himself a hazel stick and he was carrying it when he encountered a stranger on London Bridge. And the stranger asked David uh, where he'd cut the stick and he ended up accompanying him back to Wales to the place where the stick had been cut. And the stranger told David to dig under the bush that he'd cut it from and this revealed steps leading down to a large cave uh, illuminated by lamps where a man seven feet tall with a red right hand was sleeping. And that stranger told David that this is Owen Llaugor, who sleeps until appointed time, where he wakes and he will be king of, he will be king of the Britons. And um, he was apparently surrounded by his closest knights, and they all lay there standing asleep, but jittering and dreaming of battle. They are said mm. to wait for the clarion call of trumpets and the clash of arms, where, as one, they will seize their weapons, pour from the cave, and drive the Saxons from their land. So, uh, that's a cool that, one. I like that's, that. That's a cool one. The second one, I'm glad he didn't go into too much detail, is about the Guernsey. So this one's yeah. uh, there's a in Guernsey, this is quite a famous thing that happened to him. I don't think there was too much too many battles in Guernsey, but this one here was quite a brutal one. But there's a there's a, a folklore about it, and I'll tell you what I'll tell you the, the myth and then I'll give you the facts. Um, so in Guernsey, Owen is remembered as like you said earlier, Ivan or Yvonne de Gales, Yvonne of the mm. Yukon. Um and he and his, what the, the mercenaries he took there were called uh, Argonese. Argonese, oh, uh, uh, so wine on the Argonauts. <laughs> yeah, so Aragon <laughs> is a place I think in France, and Argonese, who are the mercenaries, where they were all camped. So they were Welsh, like you said, ah, but right, this is where right. they were based. So he hmm. and his Aragonese mercenaries um, have been absorbed into the island's folklore. So the reality was, yeah, uh, Ivan de Gals and his Argonese mercenaries. Uh, attacked this land, but the folklore they turned them into diminutive but handsome fairies from across the sea. So the story mm. goes that the shipwrecked king of the fairies, Owain, uh, was found unconscious by a Guernsey shore by a girl named Lizabu. <laughs> oh, Lizabu. <Lizabeau. laughs> that sounds like someone you couldn't be bothered to think of a proper name. Lizabu. <laughs> um, so when Owain the fairy woke up, he fell in love with her and carried her across the sea to be his queen. However, the other fairies soon decided that they wanted Guernsey brides and they invaded the island. They all wanted that bit of famous Guernsey skirt. So, yeah. <laughs> Guernsey pants. <laughs> <laughs> so then the men of the island fought bravely but were absolutely battered. Did you say Guernsey skirt? <laughs> Fucking wrong. I didn't. I said Guernsey skirt. Oh, skirt. Oh, my God. That's my bad. Sorry. I was thinking, it took me a second. I thought, he didn't say that, surely. And I thought, I have to double check. I have to confirm. Guernsey squirt. I was like, oh, you're disgusting. (laughs) So, yeah. Oh, I met this beautiful uh, Lizabu. And he was like, right, you're coming home with me. And the other fairies, right, do you know what? These Guernsey girls, they got it going on. So then um, the men of the island... Well, so then, yeah, the rest of the fairies came back to steal these Guernsey girls, and the men of the island fought bravely to hold them off, but they were absolutely tranced, and they all were slaughtered, <laughs> except for two men who hid in the oven, like that chef from the deep blue sea. <laughs> that guy goes, I'm the only chef being cooked in his own <laughs> oven. <laughs> like, <laughs> we will begin with the perfect omelet, which is made with two eggs, not three. Amateurs often add milk for density. This is a mistake. So then the fairies took their Guernsey wives because everyone had been killed except for these two blokes in the oven, probably kissing and making out before they were going to get killed. <laughs> um, so, yeah, these fairies took away the Guernsey wives and this is the reason, right? <laughs> this feels like such a lie. So this is the reason they say typically Guernsey men have dark hair and short stature, but I think that's just a lot of Guernsey short kings trying to justify why they're so small and wearing oh, high yeah. heel booties. <laughs> what, because we hid in the fucking oven? <laughs> no, because they, they, all their husbands, all their, like, their, their great-grandfathers were fairies, which sounds a bit of a insult. Oh, right, okay, yeah. However, Jesus, a, that's a weird one. The reality is, uh, in May 1372, the French king Charles V uh, sent a force of 4,000 men under the control of Owen, who, uh, Owen, who they sometimes called Evan or Owen, of Wales, um, 
Swimley, so they constantly called him Evan by accident, but we'll go with that one. Mm. So yeah, he was heading back to Wales to uh, revenge uh, of Llewellyn and Llewellyn and to reclaim his rightful title as Prince of Wales. Um, so the force was due to be supported by a fleet from the Castilian King Enrique uh, the Second. Um, but due to the bad weather in the Channel, they failed to make their rendezvous and Owain turned back to Guernsey, which is the closest place loyal to, uh, to the English king. Um, so then there's a ballad, apparently. They wrote a big song about it, um, about how uh, Uvon de Gaulle's uh, at, at dawn on Tuesday morning, uh, when his Agnes uh, mercenaries landed at Vazon Bay and were gathered in the marshes, um, they were spotted by John Le Troc, a shepherd, who found a, who found a horse jumped on the horse and sprinted off to town to say, lads, we're being attacked. Um, so there was yeah. 4,000 Welsh mercenaries, all mercenaries, and then they got a force of around 800 Gersey lads um, and English men-at-arms to fight the invaders. So they now like outnumbered, like, four to one, and the, mm. apparently the Guernsey lads put in a real valiant effort. But um, what, what I read was it was a valiant withdrawal action, which sounds like a posh way of saying we <laughs> ran away bravely. <laughs> we just fucking bolted, yeah. yeah. No, no, it was a proper valiant withdrawal effort. Yeah. 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 But they couldn't really run away on a fucking island, so Owen pushed the Guernsey boys back. <laughs> There's only so much land. <laughs> yeah. Don't so, so Owen kind of chased them across. Uh, he got them to retreat to this castle called Castle Cornet. Uh, which apparently was impregnable, which I think is just a stupid word for a building. It's like you're not trying to bang it, are you? Like you're not going to have a little you're trying chil- to penetrate it, penetrate <laughs> yeah. it hard. It's not like you got little children with like drawbridge gobs running around. They've had their dad's a hard <laughs> castle. I just think it's stupid. Um, sorry, I got a bit lost there. Um, Oh, and oh, and well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a warranted, uh, warranted gripe, I think. <laughs> so Owen realised he couldn't take the castle, um, so he turned to another castle on the island called Vale Castle, which is where the Guernsey governor was hanging, uh, hiding. Um, so when they went to lay siege to it, some monk um, got involved and was acting as like a go between between them, between Owen and the governor. And first of all, the governor was like, "Absolutely not, I'm not negotiating." But then Owen was like, "Well, we'll absolutely batter you, mate." So. Just, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got some French dads with me, and they can be spiteful. So we will be. They can be nasty little boys. Yeah. So the governor's like, all right, fares, um, and he paid a huge ransom for Owen to f off. Like they got um, not mm. only the the funds from like the governmental departments, but everyone had to give up their jewelry. Like everyone was pretty much robbed at night point. <laughs> An absolute whip around in the yeah. castle. Before. <laughs> yeah. so, please go away. Um, so for the islanders it was like an episode they would never forget because it, like I said it was a small population um, mm. not really used to being fighting in land um, and in the 1800s they wrote a ballad called the Ballad of Yvonne de Gales and it's um, it was it was a part of the Guernsey's oral tradition for centuries and centuries but it was written down in 1839 and it's long it's so long you can read it on the internet yeah. um, but it's, it's long as fook. Um so that was the reality over the the sleep is over the myth part, and then I wanted to do the world's most boring <laughs> myth I've ever heard. Um, <laughs> this is another the other legend about Owain. Um, is that Owain was entrusted to look, look after a well on the mountain of Manidmaud. Um, each day, after extracting enough water for himself and his horse, Owain was careful to replace the stone, and um, that would stop the well from overflowing. One day, though, he forgot about this, and the water poured down the side of the mountain, and that resulted in a massive lake, and that lake is called Llyn Llew, uh, Llyn Llech Owain, the Lake of Owain Slab. <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> just a lie. You didn't go to it. That's just... What the fuck is that? That's... Oh. <laughs> it was nothing. That's it's, some uninspired storytelling right there. Isn't isn't it? Just it? think of something Ooh, better. The myth, the myth of mine. It's a myth. Oh, so, so magical. So <laughs> <laughs> the realm of the gods and legends. Yeah. Like, yeah. How did you come up with this? So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Mind wanted, blowing. They wanted to attach themselves to this. So it's called Thin Llech Oain, and you can find it on, you know, if you want to visit there. Um, but I do think they're hopping on the older. Uh, they thought Owain Tlaugor might become like this big superstar, I reckon. So they're trying to name it after if, uh, Clout. If myths were the movies of that time, I this this would be rotten. Uh, 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 official <laughs> rotten tomatoes. Give some philosophical point then. The myths are the movies oh, no. of the mind. <laughs> Well, why not? Yeah, I'll take that what you just said. <laughs> well, that's all my myths. That's all my legends. 
So he's quite a, a big time boy in Welsh history, but one I certainly had never been told told about. Uh, not in school, definitely. No, not. yeah, definitely. And he's interesting. Like you hear about Owen Glyn, do you? Mm. you hear about all oh, the Llewellyns and their offsprings? And you, I think maybe because he never like came back, but it's still like it's fun yeah, to hear the more. Does make you wonder, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You do think like, oh, if he did come back and the French gave him all that money, like two hundred forty million pounds to muster yeah, troops, what and sort of could we have another re- Welsh? Rebellion resurgence sort yeah. of thing. Welsh there, Rebellion for, 2, back fucking with vengeance. There but for the rat of a Scotsman. Maybe that's Yeah, really exactly. Tricked. Also, fellow, it does irk me, yeah. a fellow Celt. I know. Fucking yeah. wearing it. But every man's got their price, I suppose. <laughs> <isn't> <laughs> it? Here we are, philosophical bit. Yeah, no, every man's got his 20 pounds in his pocket, I suppose. Oh, 20 quid is 20 quid at the end of the day. Yeah, well, fair play to the fellow. I've done it for less. I know well, this wasn't the case, obviously, yeah. back then, but to me, it's in my mind, he comes back, and like, I don't know, with fucking Owen's head, and they're like, here you are, and they give him a 20 quid note, you know? Like, <laughs> and he's like, there you are. <laughs> in modern <laughs> money, and he pops in his back, but cheers, mate. Done. Yeah. <laughs> Job well <laughs> done. done. <laughs> Easy. Uh, maybe he, yeah, well, we'll, we'll see. Um, should we leave that there? Because I'm zonked, man. You might tell. I'm tired tonight. Yeah, yeah, that's so, right, mate. We've, co- um, we've covered the great man's legacy. Yeah, I'm happy yeah. with that. Told by a grumpy boy tonight. But we'll, um, it's um, decent length as well we've got on here. Yeah, so I think we've gone past the mark we normally need to get to. So yeah, probably it like, feels um, like that on a Tuesday where it feels like we have to go over the mark. Whereas on a Thursday, oh, yeah. we, the last episode we did was two hours long. I haven't edited it yet. Oh, but that yeah. Was, it was crazy. I, we were so drunk. I'm assuming you massively regret volunteering to edit that because <laughs> yeah. so much to yes i do i do i do um maybe yeah for what we'll discuss editing off air um but thank you for catching up with our latest episode and we've listened to people's yes. advice and we're going to step away from uh battle heavy stuff and the next few we lined up are i think are really good i think we've got a good strip of uh a good stretch of interesting welsh people to cover with every episode you guys listen to we're, we're honing our our craft a bit more yeah. so so, and it's, give us, uh, yeah, it's getting better and better. And give us uh, any more suggestions and stuff to, that you'd like us to cover. Um, and yeah, so if we could just drop us a five star, people have been doing that, which has been really helpful. But if you could drop us a five star on whatever you listen on, that really helps. And follow us mm. on Twitter, YouTube, and Insta. Uh, also, just to clarify, if you don't think we are five star, that doesn't matter. Just give us five stars because you know, don't don't quash our dreams, please. Come on, lads. Yeah, type in Tales Number Four Wales Podcast. And you'll find it all one word, I think, on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. it's it's Tales Four Whales on on most things, but yeah, you say Insta was Tales Four Whales podcast. I think so. <laughs> no. God, we yeah. should know this shit before we yeah. go on. But yeah, yeah. You, know, you can Google it. Just put Tales for Whales and you know your desired media platform, and I'm sure you'll find it. Yeah. If you've got a bit of an mouse, you'll find it. But Jack, you're editing this one. Time to tidy this up because there was a lot of gubbings in this. But thanks as always for listening. We'll catch you next week. Yeah, deal, guys. Ta-da, 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 ta-da.